Hi, this video is about local SEO tips for 2022 uh, and beyond, um, or GMB SEO or Maps SEO. Uh, basically, uh, for local businesses, the Maps listings, what you see down here, have become more and more prominent over the last several years, and they've made more searches localized. You can see in this example, there's not even a Dallas, there's not a city modifier, obviously plumbers, um, every pretty much every search phrase are going to rank for the the first organic results. The first non paid results are going to be maps. You see these these are paid. Um, so some people call what goes down be below the the maps listings organic, and then they call the other one maps. But to me, they're both organic. You got maps organic and non maps organic. Uh, let's go down to and there's even like I, I tried to I made it. As, I have a huge screen and I made it as big as I could, and I still couldn't see the first result. So these maps listings are super important uh, now, uh, now more than ever, and I think they're going to continue to be this way. Uh, if you look again, let's do Dallas Plumber. It's a little bit better of a result because we do we get the ad, and then we can see the Baker Brothers down there as the first result. Again, I had to make the screen really the first result. I had to make the screen really really big, and uh, so but ranking in the maps is very important it's i call it the vip line because it's the first place where people really see it it soaks up most of the traffic uh for searches uh like this and google makes more money this way if i click on this listing uh versus this one they still have an opportunity to sell me ads when i click through and it goes to it goes to the listing there's a, there's more you'll see more ads uh, as opposed to if I click here, now I'm off their platform. They get more data as well. So Google likes where this is going because Google, as much as you might guess, they like to make money. They're, they're still a public company that's accountable to shareholders. So Maps is huge. It's not going away. It's super important. Um, and I'm going to give you some tips in this video along with, uh, I'll put some links to this below. Um, uh, there's a free uh, Maps SEO master plan. Um, that I'll put a link to below, and then there's a Maps SEO paid uh, training course that you can uh, you can check out as well to get more uh, more detail on on uh, what's what's going on here in terms of uh, what you can do to uh, increase your Maps rankings. So first is I would say like proper rank track tracking, and that means that you need to track. GeoGrids, um, and I'll put a link to, I've got a link to local Viking as well. Um, and I still see, I I, even in experienced SEO groups, I still see people and it's hard to tell people, hey, you're, you're just thinking about this wrong because I've been thinking about it this way for so long. I rank X in the maps or they'll be like, hey, I'm, I'm ranking six in the maps and I can't go beyond that. What's wrong? That's sort of like, well, but that's not really how it works anymore. You, you can't really say this unless you rank really really well i've had some cases where it's like number one across everything okay i rank number one on the maps that that makes sense um but here it, it's more a, a geo grid thing so each one of these dots is one is about one mile apart and if you're not tracking this you're not really you don't really you can't really say how you're ranking and there's some opportunities that i'm gonna talk about below that you won't know to try to do you won't figure out oh this this would this would actually help me rank better um and and because Google's algorithm over the last couple of years, it's heavily influenced by where the searcher is searching from and what and how much your Google My Business page is kind of digitally, geographically relevant to that location. Let's give another example. This one's a little bit more stark. Uh, you have number one right here, number 16, you know, a mile to the east. Or I think that's a little bit of a blip. I bet if I were to rerun that, this would be number one or, or not quite so bad. But you've got from number one and number seven, number one and number five, number one. I mean, these are all just a mile apart. Um, and mile one, number one to not ranking at all. Um, and so, you know, again, what would you say if, if someone were to say, well, I'm, what I'm ranking what in the maps for this one, there's, there's no number that you could really pick. Even if you were to average these, that still doesn't really tell you the situation. You need a more complex tool. And I keep harping on this with people, but it's hard to hear it because it's something so new if you haven't heard it before. So make sure you're doing that. And if you are doing that, great. If you're not, uh, check out the local Viking link below. And uh, I'll also put a link. There's a there's a video I did, uh, a review video I did for that as well. Okay, so also what, what goes on on your website that you have connected to the Google My Business page has a pretty big effect on what you rank for. So for long tail, so let's say for a plumber, if you want to rank for tankless hot water heater installation, 
and you have no content, no pages about that on your site, it's going to be hard for your Google My Business page to rank for that, even if you smash it into the Google My Business back end a bunch of times. On the flip side, if you have a nice page about hot water heater installation um, that Google can find and crawl and likes, then that is going to dramatically increase. It has to be anywhere on your site, really. Uh, it doesn't have to be content on the GMB URL, the URL that's inside the Google My Business page. If someone were to click from the Google My Business to the website, that isn't necessarily that doesn't have to necessarily be the URL that has the hot water heater. Uh, you just have to have a page on your site about that, and that's actually pretty substantial. Um, and you know what what the URLs are for your for your pages. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to tell you exactly what to do with the URLs because there's a lot of little things that you can do. Um, also, what your Google my what URLs go into your Google My Business page. So not just what goes into your Google My Business page, but also the normal URLs. Um, how you do a multi-location business. You know, you don't want to have the URLs be just all homepage URLs. This is a big mistake that a lot of businesses make. Um, you want separate URLs for each one, and then it should be set up uh, a, sp a specific way. And then how all your pages interlink actually matters a lot. Um, in terms of, you know, you want to be linking to your Google My Business URLs in a specific way, and those should link out to other URLs as well. Um, and uh, here's a quick tip: uh, point of interest pages. So back to the your relevance to specific places. Um, let's. There's a really good analogy I've I've thought of uh, on this, which is if you're, let's say you're at a train station, all right, and you're looking for a a, a burger place, um, and there's one that is actually physically closer if you're driving, but then there's another one that's technically further, but it's at the next train stop or the next, uh, uh, it, it's at the next train stop, right? Uh, that one actually is going to be, have a, an extra bit of digital relevance because Google's going to be aware, okay, you're at a train station and it's going to, part of its algorithm is going to look along that train station or it's going to understand that that location is actually relevant to where you're at. So th this means that you don't actually have to be physically closer than everything. It does help. Your actual location is a huge part of it, but there's other relevance factors. So when you go to create point of interest pages or, you know, pages about or content on your site about things you want to create digital relevance to, if you're not tracking a geo grid, then you don't know where to go. So like in, in this case, oh, we, let's find something near uh, the seventh spot and put some content on our site about it or put make a GMB post about it. In this case, it's it becomes, it could be a, a lot more wasteful. So over here to the kind of the Northeast, I could create point of interest pages till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't really help me as opposed to creating point of interest pages down to the Southwest. That's gonna be much more useful, right? Again, if you're not tracking the geo grids, then it's, that's why that's why someone asks this question. And it's like, oh, I'm, I need, how do I rank better? And you know, I rank this and this. And it's like, well, you, you, you need to take a step back and you need to figure out how you're actually ranking. Um, and I'll put a link to, there's a cool local prominence tool that's super easy to use. And I did a review of that as well. Uh, and I'll put a link to that below. That really makes pretty quick and easy and pretty cool point of interest pages. Okay. So there's another um, factor that is important. I think it's become more important over time. I've noticed, you know, if, if I have a GMB and I just like never log into it, uh, I think it slowly loses kind of traction and trust in Google's eyes. And this could be as simple as just logging into it. I think that just logging in and poking around and looking at the, the insights and is is a safety. Uh, it's a uh, a trust factor in and of itself. You know, a lot of people talk about GMB posts. I think part of what GMB posts do is they show activity, uh, and I think that's the primary benefit that you get from them. I've done GMB post uh, testing, and it, it, I was not super impressed. I know that some people like it, and again, I think that they're roundabout doing something um, that they could do other ways. So for example, responding to reviews, uh, adding photos, uh, adding or updating the GMB business website, adding or updating services, adding special hours, adding a description. All of these things you can do. And you could just have like a VA go in, okay, once a month go in and I mean, literally five to 10 minutes they could spend, just find one of these things, do something and then log, and then log off, boom. Okay, that, that's going to increase the trust of your Google My Business page. And it's it's one of the factors for what I would call uh, Google My Business safety. So part of what, what happens here uh, is Google really is cracked down on GMBs and a lot of genuine business owners are getting hit as a result. So it, people who legitimately should have a Google My Business page 
I mean, that's, that's an arguable word, legitimate, but, uh, the, like a like a plumber or, or a restaurant or something like that uh, maybe not a restaurant but certain niches it's definitely much more likely to get immediately suspended upon receiving the letter or um, you have it for a few months and then it gets suspended okay um, and there are some uh, uh, there are some best practices here that I don't really see other people talking about and I'm basing this off of tons of testing that I've done and plenty of GMB suspensions. Um, and this is a lot of extra work and I've tried to get my clients to do it. And even for my own lead gen properties, um, I'm not perfect about this, but if you want maximum safety, one Google account per GMB, okay, that, that means you can't have one be a manager of all of them. One uh, account is tied to one GMB. All right, I know this is a pain, but what can happen um, is, you know, I had a, uh, I had an account with a good bit of GMBs in it, um, and uh, there were some just random GMBs from other, from uh, multiple projects. I did some, I was testing some some naughty stuff in there, and I thought just the GMB that I was working on with, no, they all went down in every in every account. I did this in probably about uh, three or four different accounts and every single GMB in, in, in those accounts that that, that account was a, that Google account was tied to went down. Okay. So now I'm not saying that, you know, even if you're not doing sketchy things or not trying things out, things still happen. Google still shuts down businesses just at, at kind of on a whim, you know, your competitor will report you and they'll be like, Oh, you're, you're suspended and they'll look at everything else in your account. And who knows, maybe the guy who's looking at it, they're not, I imagine they're looking at hundreds, if not thousands of accounts a day. And he's just like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to suspend all these because why not? And then good luck getting those back. It's a pain in the butt to get Google My Business accounts uh, back. Um, and so that, that was, that, that I lost, uh, you know, in my lead gen stuff, I lost probably uh, 20, 25% of my GMBs over the course of like a week, uh, 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 about a year ago. And, and it was because of this, because I wasn't being maximally safety maximally safe. Um, and as I mentioned above, just log in every once in a while and be active. And that's going to be, um, a, a safety factor. Um, the GMB business name. So one of the biggest ranking factors is having, um, keywords in your business name. Um, and I think they've turned this down a little bit, but it's still really important. So if you want to rank for Dallas plumber, having Dallas plumber, uh, in your, as your business name is going to help you. That said, it dramatically increases the, the closer you get to the exact keyword, the more likely you are to be suspended and the harder it will be to get it back. Um, and, uh, so you, you know, you can technically the GMB business name is supposed to be the exact business name as you would have it in the LLC, which is why I try to have business names that are that have keywords in them but that don't look spammy so they have a little bit of flavor joe's plumbing company instead of just plumbing company or joe's plumbing company dallas you're not supposed to technically have the the city name in it but there's a lot of franchises that where where it's like oh you know i'm this franchise and i owned and i own the dallas territory so i'm franchise dallas so that i do get away with that a lot the city name you can usually put the city name in there but i would never anymore do an exact match business name I had a client that came to me and their GMB had been suspended and it was their business name. It wasn't, it was super wildly aggressive. It was like, Oh, they, that one of their guys learned, Hey, business name matters. So they just stuffed, uh, like four or five keywords in the business name. It was ridiculous. And I was like, Oh, change this. And then you'll get your, and then request a, a, a reinstatement. They, they did that. They got it back really quickly. They were very grateful two, three, four months in, I can't remember, the rankings weren't as good. And they were like, well, our rankings aren't as good. It's like, yeah, the putting, smashing the keywords in the GMB business name does help with rankings, but you're, 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 you're walking a fine line here and the chances of you getting suspended are really high, especially the way that they were doing. But this guy, I don't know, he put them back in and they got suspended again. And it was like, I told you, what do you, you know, there's not, what, what do you want me to do? You know, it, it's going to take longer. It's a longer road when you have a less aggressive business name because the GMB business name does affect a lot. And this is why Google is targeting it. And they're looking at that a lot. So just kind of the normal SEO stuff also matters. So the, the, the higher up you rank for, let's say Dallas Palmer, your, your domain is the, the, the easier it will be for your GMB to rank. 
Um, off page matters. Uh, so the way you get your citations matters as part of off page entity SEO for your brand, how trusted your brand is, you know, like McDonald's has a very trusted brand, at least in Google's eyes. So, you know, they set up a GMB location. It's very unlikely to get suspended. It, and it, it, if it was trying to rank for something, it would, you know, it rank very easily. Um, so the, the overall business entity, along with the GMBs that are a separate entity as well, the GMB entity stuff matters. Um, the engagement on your site that Google's tracking and the on page, as I mentioned above, just the normal uh, stuff. So, um, uh, it, you know, that those are the five tips. And I, I think that those by itself can make a huge difference for you. Uh, but obviously in like 15 minutes, I can't explain to you all that there is to know about Maps SEO. If you want to know more, um, there's a free Maps SEO master plan. I'll put a link to that below. And then there's a, a not free uh, Maps SEO Ninja training course where I go into a great amount of detail and all the techniques that I use. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you like this video, please like. If you have any questions, please put a uh, comment below. I'll definitely respond to it. Um, subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.